very cool and relevant. You know, kind of changes over time as the as the market changes, the the bar is raised. You know, and, and maybe a cart that wasn't so um, competitive last year might have really pulled out ahead, and a cart maybe that was doing pretty good last year may have faded away. Um, so I continue to compare the carts against each other, basically. Um, so what this I do is across the um, vertical axis. I look in rates of options do they have, just name. How much do they do? How many different things do they handle out of the box? How complex is the functionality that the cart delivers? And then that's not, it's not that's certainly not enough to fix the cart. One of the other things that's important is to know, okay, so I can go get this great piece of software, but what stands behind that software? Right? So what where do I have to rely upon when I choose that card? When tough when times get tough and I have questions, is someone gonna be there to help me out? And so what I've done on the um, uh, excuse me, this is the vertical axis, but I think it's the word vertical axis. So the features are across the horizontal and the ecosystem is across the vertical, okay? Um, so what I've done is, you know, from low to high, I rated them on the on the vertical as far as the ecosystem. And when I talk about the ecosystem of the cart, I mean things like, for example, by the cart author itself. How good is their course of course? How good is their documentation that they provide? And how mature is the product and the team is delivering it, et cetera? And then there's also things like, so what about fire control? Um, it is and it isn't. And that is how engaged is People, how engaged is the community outside of that cart software? So I'm talking about how many third parties completed this for it and how engaged are developers. You know, when you have a prop and you need to help you fix the cart, you need a web developer or a key deliver, how easy is it to find somebody who knows that cart well and is able to fix it? Um, how many people are there to be stuff? Right? So, so the higher the heat system, the stronger all of those things are. And that is very much a subjective rate, a grade, but pretty, uh, pretty, I guess, you know, look in the form. You can look at how many extensions are out there. You can follow the current community. How do they handle problems? How good they are they? That sort of stuff. I know as far as the features, a lot of that is, is you know, kind of that's more the objective information. You know, I've got the box, either filled in, it doesn't, or the box, isn't filled in, in, as in it doesn't do it, and no third party person can help it. Okay? So it's the strength of those two things together that create great cards. So those of you who are maybe familiar with seeing things um, kind of pretty kind of graded similar to this in the past, you know that the sweet spot is that upper right. Okay? And that's the quadrant where the features are high and the ecosystem is high and everything's really strong and those of the cards <coughs> are considered quote the best, so to speak. And I'll say that with a little caveat until the end of the presentation. I've got one more little thing to say about what makes the best card. So what's in this box that goes on? I'm going to show you in a minute um, a few of the cards in the logo and where I place them on cards. <clears throat> and I have to kind of put a boundary around this because there's about you know, I invariably will show this and someone will ask me, well, why isn't Magento on here? Well, it's because Magento is not a native I chose to only handle native Juno extensions. At the time I originally did this, I entertained. Now I'm working at anything with Endor 3. It should be GPL West. There are some um, huge commerce extensions that are not. Um, so I want to see GPL license, but I want to see it with some gen. You know, I, I know that there's you know, maybe a little bit of um, public debate over whether that really has a, as much value as, as some of the like on it. I think it's important that it be on there, that the review through it there publicly, etc. Um, I did include a standalone shopping cart and hybrid shopping cart. And by hybrid shopping cart, I merely mean a cart that's kind of floated on to content. So perhaps it is the ability to take a new article, add a little buy now button, and actually be able to check out. 
You know, it, it, it gives you just a little bit of something that's functionality on top of your content. And in some cases, it gives you some great functionality on top of your content. And it could be community version. So I did include things that you got the box. Um, I didn't necessarily draw the line. And um, my, my theory here is if you're running an e-commerce store, um, none of these charts are more than a few hundred dollars a year at the most. And frankly, if a couple hundred dollars is going to make a way to an e-commerce store more profitable, then that's probably not a good line of business to be in. <laughs> Go find something else to sell. <laughs> Because it, it, it really should not be the driving decision. We're not talking here about getting a den or something like that for tens of thousands and thousands of dollars a year. Starting out things that are very right, even when they're commercial. Alright, so that that cuts the boundary that I set for the parts I chose to include in this analysis and in this publication. Alright, so <clears throat> then there is the grid. And so we have the core features from low to high across the horizontal. We have the ecosystem, a limited ecosystem to an extensive ecosystem across the vertical. All right. And so what I'll show here first is that I know that some vendors have not got have not been happy with seeing this part. <laughs> there have been a couple people with me who are not necessarily pleased with where they ended up. You know, that all being said, they are being judged against one another, and I would say that there's no one card that is the most fabulous for every single project, and there's no card that is the worst. It's what the price for the project. So, um, as a list of uh, the lady from the uh, e-commerce card vendors, go ahead and I'll show you what I've rated them. So, these first three are hybrid. Okay, so these are uh, cards that are designed to work with content of some sort. Right, so they usually, with one exception, have pretty limited art capability, but they're also darn huge like, with, with uh, the KT mark being the exception. There are other types. These are the ones that, um, that I have reviewed so far. Um, and one of the why perhaps the hybrid is a little bit more limited for us is that we didn't explore it as thoroughly as an opportunity for integrating with, with Team Lifter. <clears throat> and then what I add, the other part of something, and I'll pause here for let everyone look at this and then it's a look at this not one. Um, the cards that I've added on now, these are also whole shopping carts of some kind. Okay, so we have one at the very bottom that is the quick get easy rock quick card, all the way up to the one that's currently I'm rating as the most full feature with the most expensive ecosystem, which is a ninja shop. Alright? Before I move on, is there any questions at this point? No, we're no? good. We're good. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go through these hybrid cards first. They're, I kind of just put all three of these on one slide. Just kind of touch on them a little bit. And again, this is what I call kind of both on e-commerce. You know, you just take your JCon and go over the CCK catalog and you add capability on it to get the sell. Um, and in some cases, this is exactly what, what the store is. So, look at the one that I looked at starting last, and it has it has come a long way. Um, it is uh, improved, and they've added in with three dot O support. It's a J2 store. Okay, so the J2 store basically is on top of your Joomla content. They use your Joomla, you know, um, articles, etc. As a catalog, so it is dead simple. And it also is free, although there is some additional stuff you can buy when you can afford and stuff like that. Um, it handles, even though it's very simple, it does handle physical and virtual goods, and a couple of very basic attributes. And by basic attributes, I mean like, some drop downs for color and size and stuff like that. It looks very fancy. But still, the fact that it has a few, nice. Um, and even though it is a simple card, it still provides debt checkout, which is a really big deal, right? Because a lot of people don't want to have to sit up yet on another user account to buy something. It's a one-time thing that they're unlikely to come back and buy over and over again. People just want to get on their own. They want to get on um, Or it tends to offer pretty much the norm for a well-designed two-page check. And the one thing that has not come uh, the whole difference since I looked at this uh, several months ago, I don't think it's real important for the documentation. 
I don't think we're there being exchanged to the documentation in a long time. Um, and I thought it was pretty poor before. But then again, it's pretty easy. You don't figure most of it out yourself, but it's just that there really isn't a whole lot out there. Um, so that, that could drive you to me to just pay for some support and some extra funds, and that then you have to get some success with it. Another one that is really powerful is what's called a two mark. And that's from Jumla work. And basically, it allows you to take the pay two form and combine it with Virtuart two. Now, those two things together are pretty powerful because I know I know a lot of people who use pay two and they they know the capabilities of it are pretty extensive. It lays out pretty darn nice. Um, you can do some really neat stuff with it, and to be able to take that and then to be able to add all the Virtuart two capabilities on it because that's pretty extensive. It's a pretty neat combination. However, as I have down here um, toward the bottom of this list, it is a big one. If you don't already know what is one of those extensions, if you're not already kind of really familiar and comfortable with either virtual two or K2, I wouldn't bite this one off. I wouldn't even try it because you're going to have to on two rather complex extensions all in one go. I was a lot simpler in that case to fit with the Virtual 2. Um, but the cool thing is because you are so used to Virtual 2, you can use a lot of the, the Virtual 2 features, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. But you can use all the plugins, so like all the shipping, all the payment, all that stuff is there. The one thing that you kind of, well, and, and I have yet to see anyone who says that they've got it to work nicely and smoothly. So if anyone in the room knows, write me out so you can tell me so that I can be up to date. But I haven't found anyone who thinks it works nicely for virtual products. There's some really cool stuff you can do in virtual art for virtual products, but I have yet to find anybody who can kind of make it take you mark work well with all those pieces playing together in virtual products. All right. So um, I would say that if you're going to be doing this, I wouldn't I wouldn't choose this at all. I would go with like a virtual art two or some other part that has to be capability and support for the virtual product. Um, the quick this part is some hybrid that I want to share with you. And when I did this originally about a year ago, um, it was just really an alpha. It was really exciting alpha. Like I got a copy of it from them. I played with it. I looked at it. I was like, wow, this is good. The content for an easy to use part is pretty nice. It has it has matured, it is out officially, and it hasn't come off today. You can now use it with K2, or with Zoom, or with the J catalog, so any of those work. And you can do more attributes than you can with J2 store. Like you can adjust the price based on the collection for and make them an attribute. It does a little bit of base. It allows you to use coupons, which a lot of these earlier, you know, like the simpler cards and that the dog is used for hybrid cards. They don't do that. They don't have coupons for functionality and marketing functionality. This one does, and plenty of us can have some money to have patients for that use of text calculation that some of the other stuff doesn't. So, now, you've got a who already has Zoom, already has Take Two, or has, you know, products maybe they put together a catalog online. They aren't selling online, they've got all their products out there. And they want to get going pretty quick to be able to sell, instead of necessarily looking at taking all that information and migrating it into a full cart, you may want to actually be able to quick your cart and come a nice long way, and your cart can be doing as well. And it also is you know, a great job being compatible, so they've got a nice bootstrap money on top of it. Okay, so that, that's my coverage for the hybrid cart. So now we start kind of mostly toward the bottom left and toward the upper right as we go through this. Kind of a little arbitrary and a couple of points what I should be talking about next. But start with the really easy getting through this. So our quick card is still a full card. Okay, so it, it has its own stuff. It does not it does not hook into other content or anything like that. It is a standalone card, even though it has less functionality than some of the stuff. Yeah. Now, it's, uh, it's very simple and free, so it's always nice, right? 
I just say we need to think about using this in like the store owner who had those just a couple of products. He sells maybe just a couple of basic things, and he wants a fast way to get online so cheap. That this will work. He can do a one-page fast, easy web shop. Get it up, get it running, and, and be done with it. Um, it will be very, very simple, very easy to use. I rock it thing. Um, and it is also extremely free to open now, which is nice. Now, here are some things that you have to think twice about. The basic attributes of the book are again, really simple things like size and color. You know, you don't see right? Um, it has a two-page, oh, not a one-page check out, which some people don't like. Other people think it's so well-designed and you just get that. Like it looks like. Um, and it only does flat rate shipping. So there's no customer you can ship. You get like you FedEx and all kinds of stuff. It's real simple stuff, okay? <coughs> uh, there's a lot of things that are missing out here that if you were looking for a full blown part, you would not consider this. So consider it if you have you know, more than just a handful of products because there's no such thing as categorization of the product. There are no special little models here that can go on the page. Right? Like a lot of the full blown parts of modules of top down products and you know, featured products and things like that. None of that is listening here. You can't get two bones and it certainly doesn't track stock. Okay, so I mean it is a very simple I've got a couple items to sell. I don't want to be up and selling by a model kind of solution. But if that's all someone needs, this is the cheapest and fastest way probably to get there. This and it high with these options to consider there. Now, if you sort of got excluded, because when I went through with it, I was actually really impressed with it. It wasn't a fit for the gym lister. It doesn't, it's not pretty at all to list virtual goods on eBay with all kinds of regulations about it. And we didn't go there. But I did end up spending a lot of time looking at it because I was really impressed with how good this solution was for virtual goods. Okay, so busy stories from you for virtual goods. Now, it has not been upgraded yet to work with 3.0, okay? So they, they, they haven't, haven't done that yet. I'm sure that it's in the works. That's what they said, but um, they don't have to see it. So, number one thing for them is virtual goods, which means they've got plenty of things in there regarding subscription panels. Now, so when someone tells something, you can keep track of it, and you can keep track of, you know, how many times the have access to just tons of stuff regarding Selling a month. There's all kinds of things. Meal around it. You know, there's triggers that can happen when certain things are occur. And it's really easy to use. And there's some great reporting in this part of this. I think that this is a very, it, it, it's been well designed with a target market in mind. I mean, if you've got someone who that's all they sell are PDFs and things like that, this could be a great solution for them. Now, if you want coupons and stuff like that, functionality is not quite that great. I mean, it, you could do it, but it's really limited. So if you wanted something really fancy, you would probably need to get somebody to code something for you. And there's also nothing to do but group pricing by like access control. You know, you can't say that for this type of user or VIP user that the price is 20% off and you know, so this is some kind of user that's not, you can't say, um, you know, they get a discount once they buy something. This kind of complex marketing things are just not there. Um, I see that they have not added any payment methods. I did not see any. And the last time um, that I went through this, it was a fine tooth comb. The only thing I saw was PayPal and Authorize.net. So it's pretty limited. Um, but that seems to satisfy the majority of their users. So again, if you need something, it is here. Like if you need a payment, Gateway that's not available, or you need more intense marketing to buy a client, okay, for well, all virtual goods, then you might have to do a little bit of custom work on this. There are not that many other extensions available for it. There's not many add ons or anything like that for a beauty store. It's kind of got their own little niche market and it's kind of going to stay there. So, you know, some things to be aware of is there's a lot of limitations. Because of the target it was aimed for, it means they had to choose to not put effort toward developing everything. That might not be you. For example, there is a little bit of support for shipping, but it's really minimal. 
And it's, it's basically, you know, just bare bone basic shape and kind of stuff. Nothing fancy. Um, they're also really using very similar attributes. Again, treat virtual products. You don't tend to have a lot of the attributes associated with PDFs, right? Um, there is not a nice gift checkout. And the reason for that is because the whole security about who to subscribe, who's allowed to download it, how many times to download it is, but what date does it cut them off, when they're not allowed to download it again, when they pay again, you can't do that with gift checkout for them. Um, so it's all, all has to be registered users, and then their, their uh, subscription of what they bought under their virtual size is all tracked against that. So there's no stock control either. It's not really, you know, you don't have stock with virtual goods, right? So um, they don't have that. Also, have not put much work into taxes or things like that or anything like that because, again, virtual products don't tend to have these kind of things. Now, are they often are not taxed? I know that's not true um, 100%, but it just hasn't been something that is clamored for by their target market, so they have to put a lot of work into it. So this is a great having uh, a space in a niche of the only one of it. It's very nice. If you have someone who does a mix of virtual and physical, then I would go here because you're going to be, you're going to find yourself kind of chasing against the limitations of Digistore. And Digistore did some really great stuff. Um, they, they seem to give very good support, etc. So there's, there's a lot to be said for the vendor support of the product, but there aren't a whole lot of third party people that have been stuff to Digistore. So, so you're going to pretty much end up having to go back to that extension offer a lot of times to get additional help or hiring something just really good at digging into any sort of code. It's not like you can just put an ad out with a 10 fold merch line or whatever and find people following off and that's free to you know how to you know how to code for it. Okay, so let's move on to the famous virtual mark. <laughs> um, virtual mark is, you know, another 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 upgrade not that long ago, earlier this month. Um, so they have been getting a little faster lately than they did before. Um, however, there are still what I would say was kind of glaring problems with, with parts of it. So there's still some things that people are are digging them a bit that are simply few that haven't been done. It also is not got a problem. And I've had conversations with some past people who developed a virtual toilet, and there are no plans to do it this year. Maybe next year, but nothing planned for 2023 to do 3.0. So just, you know, you be, be aware that that is not in the near future at all for this product. Okay, so what's some of the good stuff you are? Well, it's certainly the best known one. It's, it's, it's successful, I think, just because of the sheer volume of people who know about this. Or else they're using it. Um, I would not say it has raving fans by a long shot, but it does have tons of developers who are doing all kinds of crazy stuff for it. And it's almost any sort of custom extension you can think of or integration, somebody at least does something like it for Virtual um, It has the most third party extensions out there of any of the country. Um, and you can find people really quick easily who know Virtual and, and know it well. Um, they, they don't necessarily love it, but they know it well. Now, um, I had said last year that migration straight from Virtual and then we ended up running into a couple of really large, huge stores. Because when we went to migrate down, the thing that had worked flawlessly for the media and the public stores just kind of tanked. So we had, we had a couple of sites that we ended up migrating in the last year that were very large and virtual art went that one site trying to migrate to virtual art too. And then just, you know, tens of, tens of thousands of orders, et cetera. And we had a reasonable trouble with that. So we made a pinch and got there. But the migration is very smooth for a medium to a small store. Something that has a lot of activity, got a lot of sales, a lot of volume. Just be prepared. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little longer and it's going to be a little bit more fun to air. Um, we found that it was just, we, we would go to move stuff and we would just have kept missing. Like we would say it completed correctly, but we would do a weapon creation. It would clearly order the same stuff. So um, it's just a little word of the wise. Make sure you verify your, uh, your, your migration if you do it. 
Don't protect yourself, make sure if you get there, get there. Which is good practice anyway, but it's really good for the history I can share with you about that. So, some other stuff is based virtual art theory, but I think it's got kind of a one up on everyone else is the plugin system. Um, the plugin system, particularly for things like the custom field plugins, are letting developers like Polyheek and several of our peers do some really awesome stuff without hacking the code. We can do some really neat stuff. And I'm going to share with you something that we have, because this is just kind of like a uh, very unique thing you can't do with any other code right now. The only reason they can be done with Virtual is because they've got these custom field plugin capabilities right now. And um, we have the ability to take a breathing form so you can you can get a complete four component of breathing systems, right? You can design an extremely custom form. All kinds of dependent fields and things that you know you all kinds of fancy stuff, you dictate to look up whatever you want that can drive cut or drive uh, different um, options. You know, you can use dependent fields if they choose this and then this other field shows up but only if they chose to pick up earlier list, etc. And then um, you can do customize and all kinds of things with it. We can now take that because of the virtual arts, because of the plugin capability, we can take that and embed it right in the middle of the virtual art product and use it to drive the virtual art product pricing and the attributes inside of the product. So people can do some really, have people do like custom tailor solutions with like 40 different fields to look up the you know, keep measurements for a database to give them an order cups and shirts and things like that. And that can all be right there in the middle of the virtual art food product. And the information just follows through to the order and the checkout and on the invoice and everything else. And the only reason, again, that can be done is because this neat virtual art food cup and don't plug it silly. But right now, none of the other parts can come kind of exactly like that. So you can do all this kind of neat stuff without hacking it. Um, the tax and the calculation rules is also something similar. People have done some nice stuff with it with this calculation rules engine. It's used to calculate discounts and taxes and things like that that you can plug into and, and add on to if you want to um, and do some cool stuff like that. But there are definitely things to think about. Um, if you haven't already heard it, I'll share it with you. You've heard it here. The custom field is very much a love-hate relationship that everyone has with these things. Um, they are problematic with getting better, but they're problematic to use. Um, they are prone to be buggy every time the new line comes out. Um, there, there's definitely some challenges with them. And they don't have all the features that people want, especially with kind of the drawer that's coming up with the open form thing. The documentation, I've got a little bit better about sharing some of the documentation publicly, but basically if you want documentation, you can only get certain parts of it online and then you have to buy a book. That's kind of endorsed by the work market team. You have to buy a book. And um, I've actually got a copy of the book and looked through it. It's nice and it's helpful, but it still isn't quite there, especially if you're paying for it. I would, I would like to do that. I think the documentation does not really help people with the complexity that they can be facing when you're using virtual art. Um, virtual products. Virtual products work really nicely in Virtual Art 1.1. It is a feature that in Virtual Art 2 they actually stripped it out of the core, and now you have to buy it. So you either need to buy one, buy it, and sell it, or there's now, because it's turned into a promotional thing, other people, well, if people are going to have to buy it anyway, I'm going to build an even better one for virtual products that does more. And so there's some really nice food out now. They vary in price, and I think, I think the most expensive one I've seen is a couple hundred dollars. But some of them have great features. Um, digital downloads is the one that, that we tend to recommend the most. Um, but virtual products is no longer an ingrained feature as part of the product. And so if someone's never told you, oh, you have virtual products, but yes, there's a virtual product. They're probably talking about the old ones, but then the new one, they have taken it out, and now you have to buy it. And of course, it makes some people angry. But it's one way that the now we can be able to, you know, fund themselves, right? It's you know, part of the is free, not commercial. So I tell people, you know, you really need to think twice about this part if you don't code and you don't have the money for the plugin because there's not a lot of good documentation. There's not good developer documentation by a long shot. 
Um, and you generally are going to need to buy some plugins to do some of the more advanced features. Okay? The reality of the fact is you're going to have to do that. Another thing that I tell people is you need to fix damage to under any sort of real slow time pressure. If, if your client is giving you a very short window to get this thing up and live, I would not suggest taking virtual because there is no paid support. I mean, once you go hire somebody, um, you know, you go on the form and you ask a question and, you know, if you're lucky, you get an answer in a couple of days. Maybe. You know, it's a free form and it's usually peer to peer. Um, you know, the developers for, um, for Virtuart will come in to ask questions if you do what it's kind of allowed. Um, there's also a couple of really great people who are community members who are not being compensated, which is really nice about them. But again, you have to host it. That's the job. All the funders that hit that form in the NLD. So if you're under price, I don't recommend going to Virtuart because you're, just, you're going to find yourself struggling with the answer. Um, I also would not even think of using a built-in checkout. From the, from the first beginning budget on giving yourself a commercial add-on for making problem prices. The built-in checkout is awful. <laughs> okay, awful. Um, and I mentioned when I started this, the 3.0 is a lot. Like, right? not even entertaining considering doing it until sometime this year. <laughs> like, so it, um, and so I also tell people, you know, if you get into virtual market and you get enticed by the whole, it's free and there's lots of people who know it. You wear the Winchester House syndrome. And those of you who may or may not know what the Winchester House is, there's this house. I think I'm going to take a look at that monstrosity. There's this house that's in San Jose, California. It was built by the woman who was the widow of the man who found the Winchester rifle. And apparently she was a widow for the you know, majority of her adult life. She was very, very rich. And apparently, she was very rich, and she had nothing to do with going to the doctor, I guess. Uh, she just decided that as long as she kept building her house, she would never die. And so she just kept building. She didn't send them any sort of plan. It was like a piece out of here, or kind of just, not only put some stairs here, all the blocks, but I don't know if this is that way to crazy. I've actually tore the house and it is in the front of the bank of It is, it, it's just planned at all. The pieces, the pieces don't really flow nicely together. They don't necessarily work together. Um, it, it just changes moods as you are from room to room as part of the house. Things that don't necessarily belong in just kind of the gap with the fit. That is unfortunately really sometimes with a virtual art store because they're going to get this Virtual art, and then they're going to add this uh, virtual product thing from one person. They're going to add a new plugin from another person, and I add, you know, something cool like maybe what we sell from us, and they're going to go, they go, they're soft. We're all trying to connect the well together. And while I think it's a little better, um, it's still a long way to do that. So I tell people, you know, please beware of going house and you're considering something like virtual art is that so many different pieces in it and third party extensions, it can be real nightmare to maintain. It really can. And then every time you upgrade, you don't know what you're gonna it can be a real it can be really challenging. So you do need to think about that. It's a real concern with virtual art in particular. Alright, so now we're definitely clearly up in this upper right hand corner um, for this next one which is Hickshop. Hickshop is admittedly one of my favorites. Um, it is out for 5 and 3.0. So I just brought a new version out again. It really updates very frequently. Um, they are extremely active developers. They are supporting their products, even on the forums. They're just, they're, they're, there's clear activity going on with this part all the time. So, some of the stuff that I like to tell people about Microsoft is, you know, the administrative features are great, they're easy to use, it makes sense, um, it, it has power, but it's not overwhelming. Um, the custom build capabilities, the custom app characteristics are really, really easy to, to do and to do, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff, like you can make, some people will come to us sometimes and say, I have a virtual art store, 
and I need to make a configured bundle of products out of other products. So like, well, then you have to go buy product builder, and then you have to do this, and you have to do that. Take a shop has that come as off. Like, if you're able to create products, and then with other products, you can choose those products and options for that. So you can kind of like, create products and support your other products. And it just lets you do that right out of the box, and actually the product is really neat. Um, it does a great job of virtual products. And in fact, it has an add-on called a serial that allows you to serial number kind of mark not the PDF and the PDF. So you can kind of like individually serialize what the person thought and what it marked on there that sort of thing. And it's tracked a little differently. So um, depending upon how if your documentation is, that can be really, really powerful. Um, Another thing that's really nice about it is even though it's a very robust part, it has a ton of features and done a lot of things, it's really easy to learn how to use because they have, and so far they seem to be the only vendor that's really got this down, and it's really nice contextual help. So like if you're inside the product page and you're looking at the product pages and you put help today, it doesn't like take you over to their docs, right, where you then search and look through product information. It opens up the window up the screen you're on and brings you to the little bit part of the dock right there while you're working. You can scroll, look, decide what you're supposed to do, oh, that's what that field is. Close it and continue on. So it's very nice to help with kind of just built right in, which is something that, you know, those of those who don't do a lot of enterprise level stuff are trying to expect. It's not common in the world, and they, they've done it in really easy to learn the product and get done a lot because it's just for you. Another thing that was you're starting to kind of talk about last year, but it's now out, it's not past data, and it is, it is winning people over right and left. It's, a, it's an add-on, but it's their multi-vendor and multi-store add-on called Hicka Market. Now you have to have big shops, and they have to add Hicka Market. But it allows you to do fabulous stuff. People can add products from the front end, and all the front end editing and all that kind of thing. It's beautiful. So, um, between the bigger shops, the Hicka Serial, the Hicka Market, yes, you're going to spend a chunk of money. You're going to have these products that play perfectly together that, that give you probably almost 90% or more of the functionality any large shop that does a lot of complex stuff we want to do. So one of the things that I would tell you, oh, okay, these are the areas that maybe we're going to want to think twice. They're affiliates. This one isn't that great. Kind of, it's okay. But um, I wouldn't say it's just robust. I would like to see them be better with that. Their subscriptions are um, a Kiva subscription now. So it's third party. You have to go buy another thing. But it, it is nicely integrated with Kiva, and that's actually um, really been matured you know, in the last couple of months. So that looks really good now. Um, the shipping options are pretty limited. So if you need something that doesn't exist in, in the Kiva shop world already, you're going to have to first approach Nicholas and hit the shop because the guy who kind of runs the thing, he's the main owner of the, of the product. You know, first you ask him. He's a nice guy, and a lot of the time, if you have multiple people asking for it, he'll just give them a the product. But he only has so much time. So when he says, no, sorry, take that off, and he sends you to a third party vendor, and it's sort of since, well, we're like, oh, there's all sort of about the stuff in the shop. There are not that many. Um, so it's shipping off limited, and um, there's, it's not like there's tons of them being published like you all over the place for a lot of parts like like my virtual mark that I mentioned there. Um, the get help is a virtual product here, which again kind of emphasizes what I said earlier, is mostly because of the fact that you really need to build people to buy, right? So that's the main reason you get to check out what can happen. So if you if you really have someone with this app and they have virtual products, you might, might really need to be looking at some of the more, um, uh, the more specialized solution virtual products that will allow you to do stuff that, um, like the digital app. So the, the one top, that's the only thing I can say that's close to that about HipShop, and it isn't even really bad, it's just, it just is, is that um, the only reason they're not higher up on the um, ecosystem, a little bit more vertical there than that upper floor a little bit more, is because there aren't that many third-party extensions developers at all, and there aren't that many third-party extensions out. 
a little better. I will say that I'm surprised to Ankhmar, who's had to do with Nicholas now for last year, and he is, he is by far one of the best e-commerce uh, authors to work with. He is, he is quick to answer questions, he's friendly and very supportive of developers. Um, so I'm surprised there are not more, um, but there isn't a lot. So if, if it's going to exist, um, there's going to possibly have a bit harder time to live in. Okay, so then I've got just a couple more cards to talk about here, and then we'll be, then we'll be winding up, and we can go to any Q and A that might have come up. So, red shop. Red shop has just released the version that I took a look at it, and there aren't that many new features. It's more budget. I mean, if you're still in the buying thing, it's more budget. Uh, no three ads before yet. I'll talk about that more in this minute. So, red shop is the uh, very good custom fields as well. The ability to do custom fields groups and things like that and assign them to products so that you know you can spend all your time once and you have to sign your group. That helps with not only get up here and some of the more complex parts. You can customize the heck out of it. Customize the email to your heart content. Um, and also out of all the ones I'm talking about, it has a pretty capability. They it actually allows you you have meat, you have what kind of where uh, you can keep stock separately from both of them. And you can track the opioid shipping from the Google case. So um, if anyone that cool scenario and they want to run one store, but they want to be able to track through it or it add a whole but also within multiple stock rooms, red shop the one that and the main reason why is that's kind of that kind of complicated logistic kind of big e-commerce. Um, very customer friendly, a lot of cool things on the front end, mm -hmm. wish lists and all that stuff. Um, and they do also support multi vendors as well. Not quite to the same level of capability and friendliness as uh, Pick Market, but still pretty darn good. Um, some of the things that I would say to be cautious about with Red Shop are the templating system. Is it really any better than this ago? So if you don't know CSS, and you don't know templates, and you don't know HTML, and that's just something you kind of like to see provided for you, and you want to focus on other possibilities of the site, I would say you would get someone to help you outsource that part, um, or get a different part. So it is it's not easy to make that shop look good. Okay? There's a few things that come out that little you can add on a few things if they admitted this is a problem and they run the people complaining about it. But I wouldn't say that it's far enough to be a company here. There is a big learning curve. Uh, Red Shop is just organized differently. But it's a ginormous bunch of uh, all over the place. Use Red Shop on a very regular basis. You will find yourself going, where in the world was that again? It's just it's not as intuitive as this, that's for sure. The support a little close, a little um, And I did want to make sure I kind of alerted people that there's a major rewrite 2013 coming. And when they warn that there's a major rewrite, they talk about the do things from the ground up. I don't know about the time frame. Uh, anytime I've heard a vendor say that before, it always takes a lot longer than they think. And the other thing is, it always means that everything because you still want to have to be real. It is not just, oh, you know, you think upgrade a little bit. It's usually a fundamental shift. And the same thing happened with Virtumark 1.1 and Virtumark 2. A lot of stuff that each one worked on 1.1, you know, the extension vendors looked at it and said, you have completely changed the whole playing ground. And I just, it doesn't make sense for me to upgrade. I'm just not going to do it. Um, so the rewrite, Kind of like they have a ton of their own extensions that they do. They have a huge support of them. And those are obviously all the updates. I mean, that's like their product that they're doing. But any third party stuff, which is not, not huge, but it is out there, or any custom stuff you have, be aware that the whole you know, building is on is going to move at some point. And if they're doing this to prepare themselves for 3.0. So, um, no promises yet about the timing, but just know that that shake up is coming and just be aware of um, so I tell people with yes, uh, Red Shop that they are not technical. You are not a techie. Don't go here. 
Um, and if, if you want subscription capability, it's not really very strong in that. Think about where Red Shop came from. Red Shop came from physical goods, warehousing, logistics, barcoding, all that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that's been the bread and butter. And so we've added stuff onto it, but it's, it's history. So subscription, virtual things are not where they're as strong by a long shot. And there are very few first party extension developers. And uh, frankly, I think a lot of the Red Shop is very big on if, some, if two or three people ask for a uh, for shipping plugin, they just go build it and make it part of the product. I think it's part of their business model to not not to not necessarily um, uh, let people go out and buy uh, build a whole bunch of other competing plugins that that might be good installations them because they they sell them all separately now. They used to sell them as one big bundle, now they've broken it out. You can still buy the big bundle, but mostly you you get the card. And then you buy this for ten dollars, and that for fifteen dollars, and this for twenty-five. So they kind of want that. They want that there in their wheelhouse. Um, so there aren't as many developers. They aren't as supportive of extension developers like us. They're out there doing something they have no they're doing on doing eBay with them, which is not an easy thing. But you know, they're supportive of us when we do that kind of work. Okay, so you can find some of those kind of one-offs, but you're not going to find a, a lot of payments and shipping and virtual products and things like that that are by third-party extension developers give you a lot of choice which is not out there. And now I'm going to get to this, what I will say is next to Hicka Shop, Nico Shop is right there. Like to me, they're, they're virtually head-to-head. Nico -head. Shop is higher up in the quadrant, a little bit more for that upper right-hand board spot, but it's only because of the fact that it's based on open cards and therefore have a huge ecosystem behind it that is needed necessarily too much. All right. Um, so Major Shop is one of my absolute favorites. Um, love this software, like the people. Um, and it, it just released another new first cell in April. So they're, again, another person that has a lot of frequent development and keep up to date with stuff. And they've got um, two times and they got to go out. So, you know, basically I, I have, I used to say this is about eight shop. So those of you who may not know the history, eight shop was the original big open card adaptation. The eight shop folks, the people who were the partners of that company, they parted ways. They had some more major disagreement. I've heard all different pieces about it. I won't repeat any of it. But anyway, they parted ways. And so part of them were able to became Nico shop. And then the others stayed over there and went to eight shop. So when I gave this presentation, at the time, this was still happening. The whole idea was that Nico Shop was going to survive and survive, or whether they were just going to kind of peter back out. I, I wouldn't say that Nico Shop has necessarily won, but they are they're coming out as a strong contender. They are updating more frequently than A Shop. Um, they are uh, providing, you know, so much support. People are raving about them on the jet. And I can say, that um, for whatever reason, again, I've heard rumors and I've had some communication with the office and stuff, but I don't know all the sides of the story. I'll just say that the shop has been removed from the Jed for whatever reason, and I'm not sure when it will be back. So, because my criteria was it should be on the Jed, therefore we can see the reviews, see you know what people's comments are, and everything else is kind of like this neutral review area. A shop is not on there right now, has been removed, don't know when they'll be back. So neither shop is now what I would say is my open cart recommendation. Um, there is some differentiation between the two products going on. Neither shop seems to be the trend faster, seems to be adding more features, and also has a very important support and is on the great job of support is on the jet. Um, so I was already saying the general adaptation is open cart. One of the reasons why it, it went so high there on the um, uh, on the ecosystem is because there are tons and tons of open card extensions that you can use. You may have to do a little bit of adaptation, so make a Joomla friendly, but there's a lot of stuff out there that you can find that you can use, but you don't have to go creating it or hiring a developer to do. Let's do, of course, what developers should run like me. Um, it has multi multi multi-vendor that is really nice. Very easy to use, has front end administration and support, which is five star right now. Um, very customer friendly part on the front end. Wish list, 
people being able to online, um, you know, do returns. They can go in and reorder an order they placed before. Just really nice stuff. If you expect to see in a much higher end cart than maybe we are otherwise accustomed to in the general world. They also have really great migration tools and it is dead easy for you to come to their cart from almost any other cart. You want to come to them for merchandise? They got a migrator to do that. You want to come to them for red shop? They got it covered. And they also have been doing a lot of integrations over the last four or five months. Um, they didn't really have all this before. Um, they now have integrations with Jump Social Group, with Docman, with Sephora, with J News, Community Builders. Just tons of stuff that they've added. I mean, it just really walked along there. In material, basically they've taken the latest version of open cards, which is up to date, not very well with this stuff. And they also are adding on a lot of the things that we as Jumal folks care about. You know, help me connect that cart then and what people are buying and groups that are in with other things in my site. So the couple of things that I want to be aware of that there is no like, stock and stuff. So if you care about that from like, the red shop thing, it's definitely not around there. And also, still, for whatever reason, open cards doesn't seem to have this real robust subscription stuff. I don't know why, it just doesn't seem to. Um, so look into what maybe the third party's best solution would be to that, but I would say do some real research on that if that's something you need and you want to use the media shop. Whereas subscription systems like ticket shop are strong factors, right? They have to get the material and all that. And while there may be 5,000 plus extensions out there in the open stock market, you may have to modify them. You may need to know how to use carriers. You may need to know how to um, do some basic adaptation to make those extensions play nicely in the real world. And it's not, you know, maybe you know that a lot of them look out of the box and there are some things to the structure of them that have improved the compatibility even over the last six months or something. Changes they made in the media shop that make them more likely to be compatible. But um, it's, it's, it's not always a nice clean plug in and it works. So just be aware that you, if you get one, you may have to do some tweaking and get it nice and put it right inside of Jimbo. Alright, so now here, here's a couple of cards that people may have heard of um, or they've heard me talk about before. I've already talked about A Shop. It was just premiered from the gym this month. I have no idea when it will be back, but very similar to these workshops. But right now, my official <coughs> recommendation, the way that it works is to go to Panda. I took it off my list and stuff looking at it. Painfully slow development. Haven't seen a whole lot happen since mid 2012. It's very buggy still. They keep saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. They keep adding a little beta version, but it's just painfully slow is what I've seen over last year compared to what all the other parts are doing. So I've just taken it off the list. There's also a couple of cards that last year I heard a lot about. I had people come up to me saying, I want you to review my card when it comes out. It's going to take a summer and picture, and then they never got it yet. So, um, take the summer, that's really new, don't know what they're doing. Um, and slow cards was also talked about, and I didn't see any activity on that in about four months. So like I went to the GitHub and put the story out see anything going on. But it's possible they've gone off kind of private in a cave somewhere, but I don't I don't see it happening. So if you've heard of these two, I'm not seeing where these things are released anytime soon. They just don't seem to really have the traction. So, I mean in all fairness, Chuck and Curtis is, is it's very competitive, look how many there are. And it's really complex. And you've got clients who are very high stress because you I believe it in your hand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the current is looking, you're losing money every single day, right? That comes in the heart. Um, so it's a, it's a high stress, has to be competitive extension market. And, and some people just kind of start get into it and then they realize it's just been something that they can afford to pursue. There are a couple that I have been watching that are up and comers that may turn into something, so I thought it would bring me to your attention in, in closing. One is Ucomer. Just hit dead, but for whatever reason, the sales are on hold for the next like, nine or ten days. Looks really cool. It's really exciting. I haven't been able to get my hands on a copy yet to, uh, to evaluate it. Um, they tell me they'll be able to provide me so I can start looking at it. But, um, it's, it's out there, and uh, so it's very close. It's very on the get, but if you go to the site chart guide, you actually cannot come to the get. Um, with Battle Mark, 
So somewhere is a uh, fork of Tienda. If someone who got tired of Bob Williams, he got tired of waiting for Tienda to get back together. And so he is taken out as kind of a base and he is spun off and done his own. And so he has an out now in limited editions that are appropriate for Canada and a couple of USA states. It's more of a, it's very much written from the perspective of tens of features but with tax capabilities so that it can address the Canadian tax complexities and, and a few of the states he has working on it after the, you know, after the work and help them out. Um, Zoocart by Zoolanders is in beta testing. So that's going to be an interesting thing to see how did that work versus some of the hybrid cards I shared with you earlier, so that's coming. There's a brand new hybrid card that was just released called Flutter. Haven't got much sense on that yet. We've heard about that in the last couple of weeks. So I'll be checking that out. And maybe next time I do this presentation, I'll have an update on, on what my thoughts are about that one. And Elon, they've been talking about it since last year. They're going to buy a think of shop hybrid that works with their CCK. And they actually do have a test site up with they are using it. So they're doing a whole feature of knowledge thing of using the cards that they're building first to be able to sell their own stuff. Um, from everything I'm hearing, wow, they found here to tell them. I don't know what it would be for sale to the public, but I know that that um, that's what they've done and so those are two real powerful things to put together that could be amazing um, combinations. You know, we had the K2 mark. The K2 is a virtue mark. But uh, if you take a ticket shop, but I get fabulous, and you put that together with a CTK, like, you go on, oh my gosh. So that's why it's that's like, wow, I can't wait to see that one. So keep your eye out for that, that's coming. Um, so to kind of close this out with, you know, we sort of need to the question of what's the best shop is. I always like to say the best shopping card is if you only need that shopping cart right there, that tiny little one total wonder of maybe like a lock cart. <laughs> maybe that's all you need. Or maybe maybe you need maybe you need a hip shop or something. Yeah, maybe you do need all those features. Great. Then that's what you go for. Pick what you need. But try to avoid that. <laughs> try to avoid getting everything in the big hobby bundle and maybe you only need three of those two. Um, because it just is more to maintain, it's more that can go wrong, and I see people kind of gravitating toward automatic and the best card and the big card. And the best card is the one that is the tool that the job. That is, that is the message. Because, and, and here's the other reason why you want to make sure that you, you get the right tool. You know, maybe you need just that one pocket knife, or maybe you do this uh, pretty robust set of, of additions there to your pocket knife. The thing is, to keep in mind, Commerce stores and sites, and there are three very terrifying words that your client is going to say to you right before you go live. And even if you do a great job, we always these these words come up, and they are, by the way, by the way, <laughs> I need to be able to offer discounts when people buy two products from this category. Story. And, I, and then when they buy two or five in any of two categories, they want me to get two percent off. You know, you'll just pay it toward the end if you get ready to go live and ready for you to say, oh, by the way, I'm going to bring this up. And those are, those are terrible fears to end in commerce projects, right? And what I tell people is, please be aware with e-commerce that you really have to spend the time up first. Before you pick your card, your clients come to you and they get their mind made up that they want to hit the shop or they want to burst the or whatever it is, spend the time with one of the assets. Talk to them about what kind of options they need, what kind of currency they need, they want people to have wish lists, they want people to do be able to reorder, what kind of email marketing do they want. Do they want to be able to do automatically send them the, when someone abandons the cart? All of those kind of things, those, those are the things that will kill from your by the way very end of the project. The very, very end of the project is not the time to find out about them. So it's very important with e-commerce. You know, any, any good site takes a lot of work planning, but e-commerce is one of the ones where the client comes into it often with very frequently these ideas about what should be easy. And they don't realize how hard it is to retrofit these things into something. So, um, you know, definitely we have a process that we go through when we're talking to a client about a new e-commerce site. We actually, you know, 
like Excel is a golden to help people figure out what the right one is. So for all these things and, and really explore them in enough depth to make sure we can say, you know what, the right solution for you is this one, and here's why. Versus, you know, you need, you need maybe to go to Red Shop, you know, and here's why. Um, so then just my caution to everyone is especially after having looked at all these, there is no one part especially best as much as I strongly um, recommend uh, Ninja Shop and Pinker Shop. They're not the right answer for everyone. And there are many cases where virtue art is the right answer. Or even, um, you know, like Rock Hook Art might be the right answer. So the right answer is very dependent upon the customer needs and what their expectations are from the store now and what their expectations are from the store long term. So that is the end of the presentation. And I wanted to go ahead now and open up to, to questions, comments, thoughts, experiences, like keeping in touch and anybody with sense of the that sort of thing. I've got a great question. Yeah. Um, so I've got a, which one of the carts and maybe their extensions that you come across that really get the uh, social media integration right, meaning you can log in with Facebook or Twitter, and after your purchase goes through, have the option of tweeting about it or uh, doing a face, uh, Facebook post about your purchase. Yeah, that's, 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 a, good, that's a good one. Um, the Pizza Shop and Media Shop both have pretty good social media integration, and there are add ons for virtual art. We can do some of that. Um, I don't think WebStop has much at all in that, in that regard. And certainly the hybrid cards are really not going to have anything for that. So but um, you're more one there, they're pretty active with that. You can know that if you can push Okay. What was the second one you said? Uh, Inca Shop and Meter Shop. Okay. The two higher yeah. ones. Inca Shop uh, has, has more social media than the other till then. You still might have to have something that was depending on what you want. You know, I have people yeah, come out and say that they absolutely want Facebook to log in, and other people want LinkedIn to log in, or whatever. It depends on what social media things you want. Um, but yeah, those are the ones that are on the most integration ones that are on the top. Thank you. Other questions? Mm -hmm. Robin? Of, of all the cards, which one do you think would work best as a catalog? You know, no real shopping cart, but more as a catalog. Did you hear that, Deb? Oh, it's the, yeah. Okay, so the question was, which one actually works better as a catalog? Yeah, not, right? yeah, not really, not really, really shopping cart, yeah. Okay, so when you ask the question two in, in return, when we say catalog, do we mean something where they can ask for clothes? Or is it just purely a display my product kind of thing? Yeah, purely for product display. Okay, well, if you do it with pure product display, and I would probably say you might want to just not even look at a card, per se. You might want to just look at one of the right? Yeah. You might want to look at Zoo, or you might want to look at K2, or you might want to look at some of the other kind of right. Zoom, right? Wow. CCKs that allow you to do very nice layouts and categorize everything and all of that. Because you don't need all that shopping cart functionality laying on top of it. If they don't need to add anything to a cart, if they don't need to collect the clothes or anything like that, or to get a purchase order or anything. Um, all of those things can be done in that you can add all that other stuff. Um, if you think, though, that they're going to want to eventually add on quotation functionality, or eventually actually add on a part of the top of it, then um, Virtuar, and I believe, I, believe, I, I know Big Shop will do it, I believe Mijo Shop will let you, but I would have to double check that. But Virtuar and Mijo Shop will let you run in hell on those. So you come out all the Okay, that's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, Terry. Deb, I have two questions for you. Uh, first, yeah. first, um, you mentioned the stuff that was more or less free. But if I'm interested in Hika Shop or Mito Shop, what's what do you see as a financial outlay for those products? I, I'll give you the um. I'll give you the caveat that it can it, it does depend. But if, if you were looking at a minimum cost to invest in it, what would you say if you were just trying to get yourself started? Are you talking about software and plugins, or are you talking about labor too? Software, yeah. What, what, what would you have to invest to get uh, like a Miko Shop project done? Um, if you don't need anything outside of the the Facebook, 
in major shop or county, and there's a lot in there, so it's very possible you wouldn't need anything else. But you can, the prices changed a little bit because major shop and A shop were the full competition, and so I don't remember what the price is. So I think like, you can get into it for the 100 bucks. Wow. Uh, might even be a little less than that. Yeah. Um, because they got kind of competitive, you know? Um, the hip is more money. It's more like a 150 or something like that. Yeah. Not to check. Okay, so. Thank you. My second question is this. Uh, give us a little advertisement. Um, how do you publish and talk about your body of knowledge on e-commerce? You, have you written a book on e-commerce? Do you have a website where, I see you have polishgeek.com, but does that, do you talk about your ratings on your site and, your, and update people on stuff, or how do you do that? Uh, that's an excellent question. I will say that I am um, working to improve how I do that. Like right now, the main way that I've been sharing is two things. One, I've been giving you kind of things upon request, and I love doing it. I mean, well, and it's great because you know, it keeps me fresh, right? I, I, I always before I give one, I go out and I look again. I look to see what happened later. I, I do this every day anyway. I also do have four spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so if you guys have that thing, I can send it to you. Um, it, it does not have like any words around it. It's all just literally like objective information. It is, it is color and it is data, you know, and, and everything's in there. Um, I, I probably, I would, um, I would say I told you a few changes to make it actually based on my research for today, to make sure today is up to date. Or um, with the way to be ready to put out updates, as you might have noticed. So, what I'm going to do is, is these slides are going to be available online. That address will not be valid until tomorrow. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to put this out to PDF and I will publish it on that, um, on that URL. So, save that URL right down, everybody there. Um, Policy.com slash Juma dash e okay? And sometime tomorrow or afterwards, you can go to that and download a PDF of all the slides. If you want the Excel chart, the big hunk in Excel chart in a PDF, I will give you that as well if you send me a request. You can just send it to e-commerce at policy.com and I will send it to you. Um, we are foolishly, we're, we're like the cobbler kids with the, you know, the cobbler kids are last week to get the good shoes. We're woefully behind our own website. <laughs> That's painful. Um, we're actually we're actually working with uh, another company that's uh, trading some services. Us. We're trading development services, and they're giving us some design. We're not designers. We are we are developers. We're e commerce folks. Um, so we are sort of redoing our site, and when that goes up there, then those things will be available for like you know, people to sign up with an email and.